Well, hello, everyone. This is Al-Fadi, and I want to welcome you back uh, to another uh, episode of this series. And we have been really unpacking a lot of things, especially uh, problems with the source material for Islam. And last time we compared it to, for instance, the available source material for the New Testament. Uh, today, I want to ask a uh, question of Dr. J. And I want to say uh, this. Uh, Dr. J, of course, welcome back. The question is, what would happen if we would compare the standard Islamic narrative source dating to, let's say, the history of the United States? Okay, well, that's a good question. So you want to bring it down to really today in the 21st century. Right. Those of us were living in the United States, both of us living in the United States uh, in the 21st century. Let's ask the same question and see if we can do a great comparative. We did a comparative between Islam and Christianity, and we saw that in one case, within 62 years, you have all the source material written down about yeah. who oh Jesus was, what he did, what he said, and everything that happened in his life, and how the early church began. That we saw within 60 years, compared to two to 300 years for who Muhammad was, and what he did, and what he said, and how Islam began. Let's now ask about United States. We're living in the United States. Let's, but to do that, let's first start and remember what we said about Islam. So let's put that, that graph back up there. Let's go look at it. And here you can see the graph that we talked about. Now unpack that for us as you did before. Just real quickly, what are we looking at? Well, we have color-coded stuff right here. Green represents the Sira on the biography of Muhammad. You see that Ibn Sham is the well-known biography. The time span between Ibn Sham and Muhammad is almost 200 years. It says a little over 200 years, 201 years to be exact. You have al waqidi the same thing, 200 and at least uh, three years after the time of Muhammad, meaning uh, we have a problem with the eyewitness accounts. Then the color blue represents the sayings of Muhammad, the hadith, which every Muslim basically is going to rely on that to learn. For instance, how how do you know that you have to pray five prayers, for instance? You know, how do you know uh, what you need to do in certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, rituals and things like that? Hadith is wealth. Infor, uh, wealth All of the five stages of the Hajj or, yeah, are technically from this speaking, area. Exactly. But you don't have anything earlier than that. On exactly. The Look at the dating. Uh, the date difference is 240 years between Bukhari, for instance, known as the author authentic, sahih, compared to the time when Muhammad lived. And then we get into the commentaries, the tafsir, and you look at the tabari, and, and now it's starting to grow even further. 300 years span between the time of Muhammad and when the, uh, you know, renowned commentators al-Tabari began to at least report things to us. And he also is responsible for tarikh, for uh, what we call the history of Islam, or at least recording historical events for us. So let's look at another timeline. Let's put this timeline up here. This is a modern USA comparison. What I'm going to do, and I'm going to look at George Washington and the Constitution, because we are dependent on George Washington. Constitution is what is the standard, the laws, the institutions by which we follow. Uh, there's a huge amount of debate going on right now as we speak on constitutional matters. Uh, uh, you know, are we going to? Do we still stick with the Constitution? Uh, the uh, we we have this the, the Second Amendment uh, that that is being debated at the moment on gun uh, gun ownership and what kind of guns. This is a, these are enormous matters for those of us in America, just like it would be enormous matters for Muslims. They need to go back to a category. They need to go back to a book or a man. They go back to Muhammad and the Quran. We go back to George Washington in the Constitution uh, for our standard. Okay? Now, not every Amer American will agree with me on this, but I'm just using this as, as a litmus, as a test. And not everybody is constitutional, not everybody cares for George Washington, but I do and you do because he is the founder of, of America and the Constitution is the book that we go to, or the document that we go to, to know how we're to live today in the 20th century or any, any century. So, George Washington, as you can see there, uh, died in 1799. 1776 is when we got our independence. So that's when the Constitution was written down. Now, if we were to apply what Islam has for their book and their man, and we're looking at our book and our man for the United States. Right, and 23 years span. What an amazing thing, isn't it? So, what, <laughs> that's right. What about his biography? So the first, if we were to use the same category, the same time span, 201 years, as you noticed when we looked at the first graph, that means that we would not get the biography of Washington until 2000 AD. We're now in 2021. That means the biography of Washington would not have been written down, would not have existed except for 21 years ago, until 21 years ago. Right. How does that make you feel? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start to question everything about 
what Washington did or said or if even he was responsible for the Constitution or for anything else related to the early history of, uh, of uh, the U.S. I mean, okay. So Joe Blow was the one that wrote the, the, yeah. the life of Washington. Joe Blow says this is what Washington did. He cut down the cherry tree. He crossed the Potomac River. All these things we know about what he did are written by Joe Blow in 2080, 21 years ago. The first thing I would question is, I would say, Joe Blow, first of all, why are you writing this? Why is it taking you 201 years? Where do you get your sources from about what Washington did? That would be the first question I ask, right? That's right. And, and uh, Joe Blow will say, oh, I was fascinated by his character. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to know what Washington said. So that's his biography. That's bad enough. It's only been out for 21 years. There would be a huge rush on, uh, on, on getting his biography. But then we get to the Hadith of Washington. The Hadith of Washington, you and I would not know anything about because it would yet to be written down. It would not get written down until 2037. We're in 2022 now. Can you see a problem there? Yeah. Absolutely. It's the same now, there's another 15 years we're going to have to wait for even getting George Washington's sayings. Everything he said, all his speeches, everything we know about that would take another 15 years. How can we even know who he is or what he did, which let alone what that, he said? Yeah, yeah, which means you and I will be part of that isnad or the chain of narration because we will start saying, oh, I heard my father tell me this, my grandfather tell me this, and somebody's collecting him so far. And then we have one more genre. And this is the U.S. history in the Constitution. That would not be written down until 2090. <laughs> That's another 70 years. We'd have to wait another 70 years before we can get our Constitution. How can we have constitutional lawyers? What do we do with the Supreme Court? All the Supreme Court are there to guard the Constitution, are they not? What would the Supreme Court use? Because they would not even know what it is or even what they're supposed to go to for another 70 years. Can you see a problem here? Absolutely. I think people now are starting to get the message, understand what is the point of this comparison that you're making? The point of the comparison is Muslims, and I'm talking to Muslims now, you need to see how damaging this is. You have always assumed that we're going to listen to you because you keep on telling us Muhammad said this, Muhammad did this, I'm to say this, I'm to do this. I understand that. You do need a paradigm. You do need a model. You do need someone to follow. You do need to do what he did and what he said. And you've always told me that these are authoritative. And I've always believed just so is Al-Fadi. He grew up believing you. But now we're saying, hold on a minute, you've got a problem here. Looking at this graph, when we realize that those of us who are Americans, what we, what Washington did and said, not that we follow what Washington did and said, but we want to know who the founder of our country is, what he did and what he said. If that didn't even begin to get written down for 15 years ago, and yet we have to wait another 15 years for it to be, to even know what he said, we're going to have to wait 70 years to even know what our constitution is. We would be in a dilemma in the 21st century, really supporting our, our founder. And let's use this comparison. I mean, let's say... <clears throat> When I came to Christ and left Islam, uh, it, it is these kind of datings that were important for me when it comes to the dating of the Bible and the dating of when Jesus lived, when was he, uh, the resurrection took place, and so on and so forth. And let's say now an immigrant comes to the U.S. and sees this debate about the Constitution, they're going to go and look at the sources, right? I mean, they say, oh, why is everybody debating this? And what are they basing their assumptions on or their assertions on or their evidence on? If they see a gap like this, they may make a decision and say, well, I see the point of those who are rejecting the, the Constitution because you don't have evidence to back it up. But the minute they see enough evidence to back up, historically speaking, the 1776 independence, the 1799, uh, uh, basically, uh, life of uh, George Washington and then other presidents after that and so on and so forth, they're going to see that at least the history of the United States is standing on something. What about the 1620, for instance, and the, you know, pilgrims, you know, and all that kind of stuff? That's a huge deal. But if you don't have anything to back it up with, I, I was at Plymouth, by the way, the other day, and I looked at the rock, you know, and I saw the date and I saw the place and I saw many things. You know, to me, that's tangible evidence that supports things like this. If you want to find out what the Constitution is, you would not ask for an oral tradition of what people think it said. You want to see the Constitution. And there are examples of the Constitution. You can actually see them. You can go and see the Liberty Bell there in Philadelphia. You can see the story. You can actually go, and when you go to Boston, you can see about all, you know, uh, Paul Revere's ride. You can see the, where the bell tower is. All these uh, these. Pieces are there, they're evidence there because for 200 years we haven't destroyed them. 
if we demand that of George Washington and of our Constitution, that we want to see the evidence, I would suggest that Muslims must demand the same thing of Muhammad and everything he did and everything he said, and certainly the city where he lived. I would ask that they demand that. I would say, listen, we demand that of Christianity. We want to see where Jesus was born. Uh, we want to see... Uh, in Bethlehem. We know that city exists. We want to see where he grew up in Nazareth. That We know that that exists. We want to see where he died in Jerusalem. We want to even see where the, or where the, the hill Golgotha is. These are the things we demand of Jesus Christ. And we're talking about 2,000 years ago. Muslims, therefore, must also demand the same thing because I'm going to demand it. If they really do want us to believe in this guy named Muhammad, if they really want us to believe in how Islam began, if they really want us to believe in this book called the Quran, and they really want us to believe in this place called Mecca, then prove it from the seventh century. Show me at least any of these from that century. We've done, you can see the problem with just a simple uh, graph with uh, George Washington. We showed you also with this, uh, the comparing, Christ, comparing Christianity and Islam and our sources. Now I demand that of Islam. You've heard the man. Till next time, have a blessed day.